The Savannah River was once a bustling, active route for importing and exporting goods in the river region, but its proud past includes a perilous period that changed lives and later influenced a segment of art culture. The slave trade had been abolished in 1807 and really took effect in 1808, um, but this is 50 years later. Um, in December of 1858. About 400 slaves were brought to Georgia on a schooner called the Wanderer. 200 were taken through the dark, murky water of Horseshoe Creek and into Edgefield County, South Carolina. There are newspaper accounts that talk about how intelligent they were, um, how quickly they learned when they came here and started working on the different plantations and whatever field they were, they were they were skilled laborers. Although ripped from their country with an uncertain future, the slaves would not let go of a piece of their past through the art of face jugs. They're very rudimentary, they're, they're very crude, they're very small, and it's believed that they practice the voodoo religion. And so they believe that they could talk to ancestors through the face vessels. Minister Fred Morton is the descendant of a slave brought over on the Wanderer. He was stolen using a red piece of cloth, which is was the payment uh, in Africa. You worked for cloth. The jugs are small in stature, typically three to eight inches tall, but they were large in meaning and the symbolism of home. Since the ending of slavery, potters have recreated face jugs crafted after old ones that are scarcely found around the country. While no one can put a true price on the service of slaves, collectors are paying high dollar to get a piece of their work. They do fetch a large price, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, at auction, they can go from anywhere 12 to $25,000. It's a story of, look where God has brought me from. It's a story of, it, just continue, hang in there, don't give up. For Hidden History, I'm Dee Griffin.